I'm sure all of us went through this to different degrees, but you go to share something that you've learned from Destiny or Technotutor just by talking to somebody. And people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Right? And then people face a lot of resistance like that. They don't know how to handle it because they don't realize it's it's really about <clears throat> your communication ability. I find communication ability is something that I've taken for granted forever until like a year ago. And we don't know how to measure how effective we are at communication because what's the justification that we use in our mind when someone disagrees with us? They didn't get it. Now, sometimes that may, it may be the case that that person is not well, ready and willing to face something, right? But it's like, how do you differentiate the point? So the only real way, obviously it always depends on the relationship, but I find in terms of the objections that people face of, I know we handle it to some degree, but this could be like the, the pot, the objection handling podcast, where in the context of just becoming more effective in your communication, obviously the foundation of it is TechnoTutor, but TechnoTutor itself, it's necessary. You won't change without it, but just because you're using it doesn't mean you're changing right? People get caught up in that. They're like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend, I was talking to somebody, I didn't tell you something. I was talking to somebody, a gym member, right? And they're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to work for my job. You know, they have work that's very flexible. And they're like, I'm going to work for two to four hours a day and do like my, my personal development for six to eight hours. I was like, I think you have that in reverse. And they were like, no, no, like, this is what's important and blah, blah, blah. I was like, what do you think KT does? Do you think he does that? And they were like, no, he definitely does the opposite. Wow, thank you so much for that. <laughs> it's like, where did you get that from? Right? So it's like, the point is, we think that being in the gym all day or in the training grounds is us changing. But the point of doing techno tutor and writing and process and all of that is to prepare you so that you can go out and change. Yeah. And so I think if we clarify that point, the practicality of that, along with um, the what what I would say life support, practical real life support of the the little how tos of what people are thinking when they say objections, like particular objections. And how to support in the education of that, because that's what it comes down to. There's a, <clears throat> there's the, the stream of reasoning that Avery has talked about, which our entire system is fitting into right now. So it starts with um, when people do something evil, right? And just, I know you guys know this, but play along for the people listening, right? But when people do something evil, like shoot up a school or rape or, you know, just kill somebody why what what's causing that evil anger anger right and so the anger that comes up that makes you want to do something vengeful or or evil um where does that kind of anger come from blame blame because you're saying it's your fault, so you, ha- you, can, you can externalize that point and then get angry at them. It's the same reason why we say, you know, that person doesn't get it. They're so fucking stupid or whatever the case may be. So we don't have to take responsibility, right? So mm-hmm. where does the blame come from? Ooh. I'm waiting for Drake. Ooh, Fear. He's not certain, though. Nobody's certain. Fear. Oh, shit. He says it again. Like, okay, I missed it the first time. But yeah. <laughs> right? Because, <clears throat> well, it's when we're afraid of something. It's like we don't trust that we can handle it effectively, so we don't trust ourselves. And when, as soon as we do that, that moment, we give our power to somebody else. And then we blame them. So when we don't develop our communication ability, we say it's that person's fault that they don't get it. So then we can blame them and get angry. 
right? And then in relationships, it, it escalates to something evil or whatever the case may be. So where, the fear, where does fear come from? Where does fear come from? Doubt. Right. That's that point that creates fear is you doubt yourself. Where does doubt come from? Inequality. Lack of understanding. So well, inequality well, first, yeah. right? Inequality yeah. first. And it's that inequality of somebody else is better than you. Something else has more power than you. Something else has, right, superior. So then you doubt yourself and you doubt that they're going to do the right thing for you because what do you know? What do you know about yourself? You're inherently self-interested. Not Sorry, not inherently from the perspective of because you were born, you're, you're self-interested. is because you're of the system, you're self-interested, right? So you've accepted it. Oh. Only if you accept it. That's right. And I'm not saying it's, it's what you've accepted. Exactly. Exactly. And so this is such an important distinction because people just say it, humans are inherently evil, right? Uh, that, that's, that's really cool because that's like, that's that point of being born into sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like the, you're born the into the environment of it and you accept it. Yeah. Your impulse. That's not by saying it. that you're born with it. Yeah. Right. And that's the, that's the distinction is we're not saying you, it has to be this way, which is what people, when they talk about original sin, they're like, nope, that's the way it is. It has to be that way. There's nothing you can do to change it. You just have to ask for forgiveness versus you're born into an environment. You've been abused. You've developed a certain character and acceptance of things. That's the way it is, but now you can change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And there's like some things that you possibly were born with that are consequence of people participating in that. Right. You know, like health things or just like mannerisms and just things that can be passed down within right. birthing a person that are a consequence of that adult not taking responsibility. Or this, like or that's kind of being passed, born yeah. with it. You know right. what I mean? But it's not to say that that child. Like because they're a human being, therefore they are sinful. Exactly. It's like, no, it's because generationally we've all accepted that as that... normal and uh, as how we exist. Just like how Christianity says that there will always be poor people. There will always be those who don't have. There'll be always, so then they, they, they don't take responsibility because of that. They're like, oh, it, it, that, I, it's always gonna be that way. I can't do anything about that. Like, I'll just give to charity. Their reward is in heaven. That's all I can do. Yeah, yeah, their reward's in heaven. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> that, that's so funny because now like seeing that point like Kim would always say in the past, uh, that's a low vocabulary understanding or a low <laughs> vocabulary response to that phrase, right? And at first, when I, the first few times I heard him say it, I had a reaction of just like, what? <laughs> like, right, <yeah. laughs> no, I understood what you said, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I don't get what you're saying now, <laughs> you know? But now I can see that really clearly from my own perspective of you don't get it, right? If that's what you think, like you think you're just born and therefore by virtue of being born, you are sinful. You're not getting what being born into sin actually means, <laughs> right? And, and there's so many instances where that happens, but from my own perspective, it took me a while of using these tools and doing investigation into the things we recommend on every podcast, you know, the destiny process um, and using TechnoTutor, of course, right? But it took me a while of doing that to get to the point where I have enough understanding uh, to see like, yeah, that's clearly what's meant here. That's clearly what's being talked about here, right? Versus, you know, however most people usually look at things and they're just like, yeah, that I think, I think like I, we, we did this. I don't know if we did this on the podcast, but on one of our, our calls, we talked about like reptilians. Right. And I used to have such reactions just to that word. Right. Literally thinking just lizards, <laughs> you know, just lizard yeah. people. Lizard people. Yeah. Yeah. But now reading through, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil it for someone else. You know, you're going to have to do the investigation yourself, but like now reading through when I see 
in the context of like destiny or reading like one of the blogs or anything like that it's like it just makes sense it's like oh yeah, or people so calling like mark zuckerberg a reptilian and things like that right it's different it's different than what they think like what they think of as a reptilian the average person what they're thinking is fucking retarded the average person who talks about reptilians yeah yes <laughs> yeah right it's a it's a low vocabulary understanding of it mm. but then there's you know, like go ahead I was going to say, it's like the, the specific point in saying that something is low vocabulary is like within the, a given word, you don't have all the definitions of it. You don't have all the context. You don't have all the definitions. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also, like, also when I'm saying that, it's like, rather than call you stupid, right? Which is like, if I say you're just stupid, then that's like, it's kind of like playing into that. You can't change that. That's yeah. just who you are. You're stupid and I'm a smart person. It's like, no, that's low vocabulary. You don't know that yet you don't have the foundation you don't have the building blocks to understand it so somebody who's like um you know we can't change the world because you know god is in control of everything and also you know he has to allow everyone to have free will and therefore people are going to choose evil but if they would just choose god they wouldn't do evil and you, know, you can't change everything right you're not god and no, god is perfect bit. and he creates in the image and likeness of himself but the things that he created are not perfect but right. i don't get it but so i'm saying it's a low vocabulary if you can't see through that Right. Right. Oh, yeah. like if you can't, if you can't see all this stuff going on with like the flu going down and but coronavirus going up and everything. And then like, that's not a problem for you. Like <laughs> that's low vocabulary because your vocabulary is the experts don't have a problem with it. They're saying it's, they have a reason. And, you know, and actually I saw this, um, <laughs> I saw this thing on Twitter. It was a quote from, you guys know, know who um, uh, Richard Feynman is? Mm -hmm. right? he's like a he's a scientist a professor from caltech like by most standards considered a very brilliant physician you know and so forth right and you can watch his lectures and everything he's kind of like one of those einstein type people in terms of our culture right and uh he had this really interesting quote that someone put on twitter basically saying that um you shouldn't trust the experts you should always be questioning things and that's kind of the whole point of science is you don't accept things at face value i'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing it right but that's the gist of what he was saying which is like you know common sense right like do you guys remember okay this is this episode's called the scientific method right okay so <laughs> y'all remember in school when you learned about the scientific method yes and there was like steps to it right first yes. you mm -hmm a problem and you want to understand it and you form a hypothesis and yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. test it and your variables Technology. and your conditions and all that stuff right <clears throat> but like when you learned about that part of the concepts that you learned about was science has never fully formed a conclusion it's always you have some kind of ideas and you constantly testing it to try and prove yourself wrong because you're assuming you probably don't know at all you probably don't know it and I remember even in, you guys will probably maybe know more than me, but in the gin audios, I don't know if it's in your wishes or command, but somewhere in level one, two, some, as if it's like spilling essential oils all over himself. He's a little koala. He's doing his ninth experiment. He's a koala. <laughs> I don't want to have to hold it to my nose. This for those who don't know, right? I said, were you out. addicted For those of you who don't have your smell of vision turned on. <laughs> what, is, what was that, Mitchell? Are you addicted are you, to that? I don't know. I just, no, it was in my car one day. And I found it in like the passenger side slot of the door. Uh -huh. So I was like, I was going to the office. I was like, oh, cool. I'll bring this to the office. So it's just something nice to smell. Dude. So <laughs> as we were talking before the podcast, I just saw it. I was like, oh. Actually, awesome. we have one of the, we have several of those diffusers in our house now. Yeah, so yeah. one of the bedrooms. So Katie goes before we, Katie, or before Max and I go to bed, she goes and puts like a little concoction in there. Yeah. So like while we're sleeping, there's one downstairs. It's cool. Anyway, so. All right. Yeah. But you, I have one like, in my office too. <laughs> you, you know, you know, like in the, there was some point in the gen audios where, where Kevin was explaining this point of like, basically I'm explaining to you all this stuff about quantum mechanics and law of attraction and so forth. And I know people are going to say, well, but scientists don't know about that. And he's like, science is never right. Yeah. Right? It's always like people used to believe the earth was flat and now they know it's round. And then people think this, and now they know it's that. And they realize they were wrong and everybody believed it. But the one guy who thought it was wrong, everyone thought he was a heretic and you know they wanted to kill him and everything. But in reality, now everyone believes what that person believes. And they're always constantly learning more. It's like, oh, he used specifically the example of this, finding the smallest particle. 
right yeah, the, at, the molecule yeah. Right. Yeah, they, well, they well, thought the atom is the smallest Right, and even if you particles. take high school chemistry, yeah. you learn, or like physical science, like you learn about the Rutherford experiment and uh, 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 all these other guys, Dalton, and all these Dalton, different experiments. Yeah. What was the other guy, Thomas or something? But they, there's all these experiments where they tried to figure out these different particles and they had different ways of doing it. But they thought it was just like this big ball that was had positive and negative in it somehow. And then they realize like, oh, I can shoot stuff through it. It only bounces off sometimes if I shoot a negative particle. So there must be positive in the center and everything else is negative. Like they started to figure out there was some differences in stuff in, in there. And then they found the smallest particles. It's the proton, the neutron and the electron. Okay, we got it. And then they kept doing more experiments and now they got the, the quarks and the leptons and the gluons and the muons and all this other shit, right? And the Higgs bosons and all this other stuff, right? And, and the point is like they, every time they think they found the smallest particle, there's a smaller particle and there's a smaller one and there's something else and there's something new and they didn't know about this. So why is it that people think, and you see this a lot right now, you see all these people, I would say it's like the mainstream opinion right now that you trust the science, yeah? And I would say the average mainstream person who's just like not questioning reality at all, it's like, you just gotta trust the experts, right? Yeah. And it's like, why do you think suddenly we're in the far part of reality where we've got everything figured out? Like, you really think that's where we're at? We got every, maybe because we have all this technology. So it seems like, well, we must know something because we have all of this, right? But um, science has just become the new religion. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's funny though. I know you're not like this, obviously, but I see other people saying that and they're religious. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, do you ever see like conservatives who you know are like Christian and stuff, like on Twitter or whatever? And they're like, the leftists, it's just a religion to them. I'm like, you're religious, but you, you're <laughs> Catholic, right? right? If you believe this guy Jesus came two thousand years ago and died, and there's gonna be a resurrection, and then they'll you'll see them like a week later posting something of like, I am the life and the resurrection, and that'll, that'll be the tweet. And I'm like, oh, why was, why is that relevant to say? Yeah. Right, but it's like they're trying to signal their literally it's virtue signaling and I'm they don't even see that right wow but it's like i guess going back to the point about the scientific method oh oh and and Car Feynman right i was talking about Feynman so someone in the comment right where he had made it was like this quote someone posted about again something to the effect of question the experts because that's the whole point of science is you don't ever necessarily come to a conclusion right and someone put, like, because they're all super fucking smart, right? They wrote, um, just in spite of his genius, which is recognized, uh, Feynman was a bit of a crank, right? And he said, the reason why we trust the, the scientists is because they have the access to the data that we wouldn't possibly have the time or even the access to actually check ourselves. So he was basically saying, guys, it makes perfect sense to just trust scientists when they say stuff because they have the data we're never going to have access to it, most likely. Like, meaning we're not going to be in their laboratory. And there is a practical point he's making, which I get. And we're not going to, even if we did have access to it, have the training to be able to evaluate it and so forth. Um, wouldn't that be more of a reason to not trust it? Because they could say whatever the fuck they want. So, Ooh. so, but think about apply this to uh, Nazi scientists. Let's say the Nazi scientists said X and Y race of people are X, Y, Z, whatever, because of X, Y, Z variables and data we have and so forth. And you're like, yeah, 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 trust the experts. Yeah, yeah, trust them, trust them. I got trust, they have the data. But, but obviously you wouldn't agree to that because why? Well, then those people living there would agree with that. Well, sure. They did. But why, why would you not apply the same logic that's being applied here to them? Because, because you want to believe you're better than those people. Mm. You're not making those same mistakes. You have all the answers. You know everything now. You're right. But in reality, you haven't checked or done any due diligence whatsoever. You only know how to do your job. And you don't know anything else. You, none of your relationships have any substance to them. You're not based on any real principles, nothing. Spells. And literally, you're just, that's the spells, right? It's just, they're coming. They're coming. It's, it's, like, it's like Asif was making this point on uh the last hangout that we had about you know when you listen to your wish your command and there's like all these uh kt's talking about all these people where he'll go up to them and they'll say oh at other events obviously not at not at gin events right but other events and he's like oh 
you, you like this guy? Oh, I come to all of his mm. all of his events, all of them. I love him. He's the best, right? And he's like, oh, okay. So uh, you must have some results in your life. Oh, I'm still learning, still learning, yeah. right? Yeah. And we listen to that, and the person listening to it is going, God, that guy's a fool. I'm not going to do that, right? I'll, I'll never be like that, right? But Asif made such a great point. That is you. You are not teachable. Not you don't realize. Yeah, you're not in the game. If you're not, if you're not actually creating something to know and not to do, you are that guy. You might be able to recite all the stuff, but that's not actually knowing it. That's not actually understanding it. That's not actually putting it into practice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's so, not about willpower. It's about you were programmed to be that way. Because when you were making that point, Asif, about spending all the time in the gym versus, which the gym is kind of a bad analogy because that is actually where you're working out. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I meant, that's why I said like the- But let's say, but let's say you were an athlete. Right, You're exactly. a football player and you just spent all the time in the gym and you never went to play the game. Then that analogy makes sense, just to be clear. Yeah. So when you talk about techno tutor, it's like you're the athlete, the gym is the gym. You need to go to the gym, but you also need to go play. You, you can't can perform. Just stay so you can go perform. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If your only goal is just to look a certain way, then I mean, just stare yourself in the mirror. Yeah, just stay at home and lie to yourself, right? But if you're <laughs> actually, if your actual point is to go create something out in the world, right? But look at so. So you made this point though about spending most of your time trying to develop yourself, and then probably not at all actually going into the game. But let's just say trying to do that a little bit. Right. That's exactly what they program you to do in school. Like you spend so much time learning. And then when do you, after 12 years, when have you applied anything you've learned? When did you ever even do a real, then even the projects you're told to do are literally just these cookie cutter gaming the system sort of I've, things. I've never attached, I honestly, until I left school, I never attached any projects I did to the content that I was learning. It was never attached to some lesson in my mind. I never, I was just like, fuck, I got to get this thing done last minute. Last minute. It was never like, because I'm learning this lesson, I need to do this project. Because this theory in science, that's what we're applying in this experiment. We would learn the theory after we do the experiment. That, oh, let's just say that when you would do the labs, I mean, in my experience and all the students I worked with, you would either do it while you were learning the concepts or before you learned the concepts, you would do the lab. So you <laughs> wouldn't even have a fucking clue what you were doing. And then after that, you're like learning the stuff. So they seem totally separate. Instead of like, we're teaching you some stuff. Now let's go apply it in the lab. Now, what did you learn? Let's learn more. Now let's go apply it in the lab. They don't do that. It's like, they're not even trying to make it so you're learning anything. And, and I was looking at that contrasted to what we do at home. Hmm. Whereas when we instruct Max or Seneca, it's, it's very brief. We use our techno tutor in the morning, a few minutes. It's brief instruction. It's explaining, ex explaining something here or there but then everything else is applying stuff. It's doing things. You see what I mean? It's going and having fun. So we're spending more time in real life, engaging with each other and doing things. And it was funny. I was with Max yesterday and he said to me, I'm trying to remember the context of why he said this, but he said to me, you know, Cam, my job is to um, support Seneca and to... What was the other thing he said? He said, support Seneca and play and uh, bake bread with Katie. Yeah. And I go, I go and learn stuff, right? And he was like, yeah. He said, that's kind of like my business, right? That's what he said, right? And so it was just really cool because he, yeah. that's, that's how he thinks of his life is those things, not going to school all day. Because I mean, hmm. we all went to school, yeah? it was it consuming everything. Hmm. And literally it's just training you to be like, when you get older, you're going to graduate and then you're going to go to a job and you're going to fucking still hate your life. And all of your day is going to be centered around that. It's just training you to do that. Um, all for this vision of this someday, one day I'll either be on vacation or I will retire <laughs> and I will be on a beach with a margarita or whatever the fuck. And that's is. just the middle class. Yep. <laughs> like, do you think the lower class actually has that? No, or it's like maybe I mean, one time know. I'll go to Disney World. <laughs> no, yeah. honestly, I I grew up in a family that didn't go on vacation. Like the furthest we went were the surrounding states, really. 
Mm-hmm. One time we went to Florida. Oh man, you lucked. You got shit on for that. I mean, what are your surrounding states? You've got yeah, <laughs> nothing. I'm like thinking like Iowa. you don't even have any cool Wisconsin. states around you, barely. Iowa, and Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, we got Canada but, too, <laughs> to the north. Right? Like there was one one time where I was in this like traveling volleyball team, and we went down to Florida. You were and meant it was to like be a this volleyball big player. deal. And we took our whole family down there. And yeah. it was like, we it, we made a big deal of it because yeah. we had never really done anything Ooh, like that so before. Good. And honestly, like, we were probably lower middle class, but we weren't like bankrupt. You know what I mean? Like, we, we had a like house. Scraping by, yeah. You know, we were scraping by, yeah. We had food on the table every meal. Mm. You know, it, it wasn't like an extravagant life at all. I didn't get new clothes but like we still like had that and yet we still didn't travel you yeah. know what i mean like he grew up in a very different very different family he grew up where they got new clothes all the time not like over overdoing it but like they they had this the time to travel Mitchell t- tells me about all the places he went to with his family and i'm like oh my gosh he, and he was going to go to the amazon with his dad this year like all these extravagant trips, I'm like, whoa, that's like a whole new ballgame. And yet he was still middle class. He was yeah. still middle class, you yeah. guys. Uh, but and what did Mitchell's purpose end up ended up being like two and a half, three years ago? I don't know the timeline, but like you were just like traveling all over the place. Yeah, I mean, well, because it was like I still resented going to school. I resented mm-hmm. like everything and I was still just chasing like the weekend and like going out with friends and that you know kind of lifestyle and but at some point I started to question like why is the world so fucked up yeah. <laughs> like this is bad and like yeah. maybe I could do something about this like my parents talk about like donate to charity I was like then I started realizing like pretty much all the money that goes to charities just goes to people's salaries and shit so okay yeah. i don't think that's the answer <laughs> then i kept looking you know searching and that's what kind about of the people who crack. are ceos of, of charities mm-hmm. meaning like the people who like let's say they make a really good salary being mm-hmm. a ceo of a charity mm-hmm. what do you tell them like they should donate to charity <laughs> yeah they know better. like and most of the money goes to the ceos of the charities you know what i mean it just like makes zero sense yeah like that, that would be the solution i mean well for them it would but that's really why be, they exist it would really be giving as they want to receive it's like oh i gotta <laughs> give to this other ceo he's gotta give to me <laughs> so, so yeah. i i had a very similar experience when i was in college i would spend nights just looking up the statistics of you know how much money a hollywood movie would make and how much, a, how many movies would it take to feed the world for a year? Or how many, you know, just like the different, where we're spending the money in the world and all of that. Like I would, I had a whole notebook full of like calculations and stuff like that. Like we can do this. Like we just have to direct the money in the right ways. And I'm just trying to figure it out. But I, there was no implications there. There was no like practical application there was no steps being taken. Like I just was calculating a bunch of stuff, sitting there high and drinking and like <laughs> thinking about how shitty my life is. But yet, you know, we as if also, world. also as if no one ever considered it before. Not to say that it was uh, anything against you, but it's like the people who are running the world. It's like imagine being like, "Oh, guys, we need to get them to realize that they fucking know how things work." Mm-hmm. <laughs> imagine that knowing how things work and you're like i'm not going to change anything That's they know exactly crazy. how much money to pay the the littlest guy so that they can keep eating and will keep coming back to their job mm-hmm. yeah right so they know how much to pay the little guy they're mm-hmm. choosing not to have they you guys ever the global scale have you guys ever experienced this point i know you have but maybe I'll, the way i describe it see if you can if it resonates with you but like this this point where you're kind of going into an area that it just feels like you really feel uncomfortable doing it. Um, I don't just mean like a situation. I mean, like you're going into something like, let's say like, let's call it the next level of something. And you just feel totally inadequate to it. And within you, it's kind of like, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. I was looking at that because I experienced that a lot, right? And I always push through it, right? But I was looking at that and I realized something. I just wanted to share it with y'all. It's like, that's at a certain level what, let's say even someone who's, we would consider very elite experiences. And that, that doesn't even have to even be like the Bill Gates types. It could be just like your lawyers or doctors, or whatever, where if they were to say, you know what? there's something weird about this virus or this pandemic, or there's something weird about the way the banks work or whatever the fuck it is, or the stock market or something. If they were to question that, no one in their peer group is going to have their back and they're going to feel like, right. oh fuck, my position is now threatened. Like my security, what I have. And so I was looking at that point of like the same feeling that we who are not from that side feel trying to go into the next level and the next level and the next level of like, like, man, making a lot of money is responsibility, you know, and then you have to get accountants and you have to get lawyers and all this stuff. And like, even just wanting to talk to the accountant, you're like, oh, I feel nervous. And it's like, imagine, do you think Bill Gates fucking feels nervous talking to his accountant? I don't know. You know what his I mean? The accountant but, feels nervous talking to him. <laughs> right. But when you're not yeah. programmed for that, like you have to walk through all of that and then realize like, okay, I can't feel uncomfortable with this. So if I do, that's showing me how limited I still am. And the moment that this becomes totally normal and natural for me in terms of exp- how I'm just interacting with it, man, I can do a lot more. You know, it's like, imagine developing software and having to manage a whole team of people who are writing software code and doing different parts in the project. Like that takes a level of, it's like a resonant point. It's a point that is a program that you either have or you don't have. And if you don't have it, the way you get it is you have to start piecing together within yourself all the pieces of vocabulary that you were missing. And mm-hmm. until you do, and then point, it'll kind of like just feel natural. You may even not even notice it happen. But until then, it'll just feel like you're not supposed to be doing it. Like something bad's going to happen if I do this or it's not going to work out or whatever it is, which is everybody on average will experience that as they try to go to the next point, which mm-hmm. is what holds people back from ever going here. It's like why people don't want to become an entrepreneur because they're going to, if they quit their job, or they're not putting all their, if they're putting some extra focus into it, like their fear is that they're going to lose their security. Mm. But the point I wanted to bring in is I can see that's what even the elite experience, even the doctors, the lawyers, everybody experiences. If they question the system, which is providing the situation for them to plug into, to have their level, their lifestyle, their security and so forth. Mm -hmm. If they question that, I'm not even saying they consciously are aware of it. I think it's more of like a feeling point. Like it's a, I can't question it because this is what will happen. Like something bad will happen. I'm not supposed to do that. And the reason I thought it was really cool is because Avery made this cool point to me. And for those of you who are studying through destiny and so forth, you can go and read Bernard's blogs and see the process process that he walked. But Bernard or Avery made this really cool point about like when you stand up within principle, the system itself can't stand against you because it's not real the problem is when people try to stand up against it a quote against it but they're not really standing with any real certain principle it's there's going to be some point within you that is like going to back off and then that's how you're going to get smacked and then obviously part of that is being within a group with principle because if you're just one individual again that's trying to save everybody you see well, it exactly. to Trump, right? the other side of that is they're kind of stubborn. They're not really considering all pieces. And they're like, no, like I want to be the guy to, 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 to keep pushing forward. And then they have to face the consequences of that. Mm-hmm. Right. And if um, the way in which you're doing it is causing a bunch of other people to just follow you. Right. Again, not criticizing Trump, but we talked about this before, but it's like how many people were just waiting for him to, to save the day. Hillary Clinton in jail or whatever. You know what I mean? It's right. like, what are you doing in your life to bring you to more responsibility within the system that we live in. But of course you're gonna get all the excuses of, well, it's God. he was ordained by God and all this other bullshit that's just total bullshit, right? So yeah. I, I know people still today who think like Trump's gonna get back in. Oh, I know, I still see it online. It's like, yeah. all right. So I mean, that well, kind of inequality, <laughs> that's going back to that, that line of reasoning of evil comes from anger anger comes from fear fear comes from doubt doubt comes from inequality or sorry fear blame doubt inequality um 
that inequality of thinking that somebody's better than you, thinking that, oh, I don't belong in this position. There's other people for that. I can't be the, I can't be blank. Somebody else has to do that. It's so great what you guys are doing, right? All of us have gotten messages of like, man, what you guys are doing with self perfected is so cool. It's like, imagine we use that. I just don't respond to that. (laughs) I literally just ignore it. Right, because like, and I, I know care. that because I used to say that to you. I'd be like, "Whoa, Karen, what are you doing as a maze?" You'd be like, "How's it going with you?" Cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? And what are so, you doing though? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that point of realization is like, I remember how I felt creating the group with you guys, right? I remember how each of us felt. You didn't pay much attention to it because we had principle to what we were doing. It's like we don't really have an option. And Mitchell, that title of the not last hang up the hang up before the only way out is through mm-hmm. it's it was perfect. so good that i had some people there was like one specific person who i was i, I was like i noticed you were you were on the call like, and then he's like yeah i had to get off i was i did not feel right like as soon as i saw that title i felt so i felt this like such negativity inside me that i just i couldn't be there and you know, you have to follow your feelings. Like if, if you're gonna, if you feel negative, you, you shouldn't be in that space. So I had to leave. I just couldn't, I couldn't go to that hangout. What do you think that is? Like, what was the point there? Do you have any idea? Yeah, that- it's, there's a lot. It's going through something instead of just suppressing it. Or avoiding or, it. Yeah, okay. it's like- okay. like, yeah. like that. That's like that's horrible. his way he goes. Like, from, the, from the little that I know of the guy, that's the way he's approaching his life right now. I think he's had a lot of shit happen in his life. And so it's just like, eh, I'm going to avoid this. It feels shitty to try and even think of going through it. See, and that's exactly what I was talking about earlier is that experience of yep. if I go through, like, um, what does like it imagine, mean to go through? That, like, well, like imagine you're somebody who, who's going to start a business, right? Right. And at a certain point in the business, you realize, okay, if I don't structure the, the compensation properly or pay my employees or, or whatever the particular thing is, you can't go to that next level because there's going to be too much. Like, you know, if you're making a bunch of money, the government's going to be like, Hey, we, we want a piece of that. We want to make sure we get it. Right. So if you don't structure things properly at that level, you can't go to the next level and so forth. Right. Mm-hmm. And so my point is imagine you're walking through that and you're like, ah, it's, it's too much, you know, like it feels like a lot. And what, what if I do something wrong and like, Oh, it's going to happen and all this other stuff. So like what about just hiring to, like a practical example is just hiring people. It's like you, need, well, you want to take then, people. Well, then I'm gonna have to like pay their salaries and what right. if I can't and then they're gonna this and like well, you know and you start going through all this stuff. On the people. Exactly. And so Ugh. it's like this uh I don't want to go through the feeling. It, it's like how can I describe it? It's not even because you know if you figure everything out, you're not gonna have to go through the thing you're afraid of happening. The bad yeah, but it's the fact that they don't know exactly how to do yes and what everything looks like and so it's like kind of the fear of the unknown or it's like the fear of the consequence of something that you you may do something wrong to yes. figure out what is right or like yeah. there's a lot of different elements to that but, a lot but of different just layers, even but even more the unknown but even more simplistically it's it's the i know i don't know so that's where the unknown is. It's like, I right. know I don't have the vocabulary to do this. And then within us, we were taught, you don't make mistakes. Okay, so that's not an option. You have to know everything perfectly before you can do it. Okay, so I'm yeah. fucked. Like, mm-hmm. I, like, even though I know if I were to learn everything and implement it, then I wouldn't get this consequence. But I don't know how to learn it within myself. I don't have that trust. I don't have that ability mm-hmm. in terms of what I believe. And therefore, I'm already experiencing internally the feeling as if I already have that consequence. Like the consequence is already happening in my mind. There, and I'm feeling like the, 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 the fear of the thing, even though I know logically it hasn't happened yet and so forth. Mm-hmm. And so this is, that, this is that, that friction that you're going to experience when you kind of align your resonance to another level of vocabulary it's like imagine you have these like streams in the water you know at different levels and it's like when you go from one to the other it's going to be like oh shit like a little bit of friction right right Mm -hmm. and so you're gonna have to go through that and be okay with going through that but not being willing to 
That's just avoiding the responsibility. That's really all it comes down to is what I'm saying is you're avoiding the responsibility. And when you know what we know, like you have the tools, you know, the process to walk and then you still don't do it. I mean, there's really no excuse for that. Right. I, I can understand the person who avoids it. Be, like, I don't look around at the world and go, why won't everyone just take responsibility? Because you see that you see people <laughs> yeah. coming from that starting point of like, well, I mean, people, if they just took hundred percent responsibility, you know, they're just all lazy, that kind of attitude. And it's like, yeah. but I know why the environment they were born into, the influences, the lack of education. That's not me making an excuse for them. That's just saying, I understand why it's there. So why would I be angry at them or, or whatever? Instead, it's like the responsibility is on me who actually knows how to educate yourself outside of what you were, mm-hmm. you know, systematically programmed to be, then it's my responsibility to then support those people to see the value of those, of that, that process and those tools to then allow them to take more responsibility. So who has, you know, it's like, think about it. The person who is mad at everyone else for not taking responsibility, they're actually not taking the next level of responsibility. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's the real issue. So this is so fascinating because um, in terms of building the techno tutor business, that's like, that's all those points, like over the past year been walking yeah. through of, okay, now we got an office. Now I got people coming in to interview to be on the sales team. And it's like, right. oh shit. But that's, what's so cool is with techno tutor. It's like, so we talked about the programming between the difference between you building a business and meeting with an accountant versus Bill Gates. Bill Gates has got the programming. He's on phase. He's like, yeah, I need my five, 10 accountants or whatever he does. But for us, it's like, oh shit, that's like the next level. But in terms of actually, how, like, how do you actually make that upgrade? It's like two parts. One is you have to address the actual programming. And so techno tutor and writing does that, like what's going on on the inside. But then that second part is actually to, to verify that that programming is real. You got to just go do the thing. But what's so cool is like when you get the hang of even one little step and you make that step and you go talk to that one person and you, you know, tell them what you're doing or you do that first interview or whatever you do your first presentation or whatever it is, you know, to build a business. It's like that is like a little um, it's like it's, it's like a little bit more accumulates mm-hmm. it, like how, how would I say it? it? It would be like your self-trust you get like self-trust points that's what i was gonna say you trust yourself a little bit more a little bit more yeah and then and then you learn it's actually so fun like i i I call it the cutting edge when you're like all right i got all these people coming in like 10 minutes i don't know what's gonna happen well i know enough of what's gonna happen let's do it and then you like catch yourself in the middle of the thing you're like this is fucking fun like it's like you're surfing or something you're like oh shit and then you got all this stuff happening it's like you're it's there like you're then. surfing wow and then and then yeah. after 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 you know the event because ha- like in this context specifically like with building the techno tutor business there's like like kind of like a two to three hour event that happens and then there's like you know people can come to the next round and in the aftermath of that though there's like a realization it's a feeling but it's so much more than a feeling it's this realization of you literally expanded yourself because mm-hmm. now like no one can take that away from you yeah. No one can take that away. The fact that you fucking walk through the fear. Yeah. And then now the next time I look at it, I'm like, okay, cool. Now I know what to expect. Okay, cool. Got that. Got that. Now I'm at the point where I'm like training other people in how to do this. And so then that's my next point. And so it, it's, it's in how that relates into the bigger picture of like taking responsibility within the world is like techno tutor is the way by which we can one, change ourselves in our programming, but two, it's a business that's extremely scalable that can have millions and billions of people around the world affiliated with it. And by rising up within that, within principle, that's literally the new system, it, it's here. And so I always have that now in the back of my mind when I'm like looking ahead at the week and I got in my schedule. All right, doing office recruiting. Okay, I got to interview people. Like what's going to happen? Who's going to come through the door today? You get those, some people who are like those salespeople who are like, think they're all hot shot and they're like, oh, I'm doing this and this. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like laughing. Like you, you have no idea what you just walked into, but allow me to explain. And so that whole process though builds, like I'm, I'm, completely a different person than I have was even six, 12 months ago going through it. And if I look back 
as the past year of my life. And I find those times, if I were to really pinpoint over the past year, where were those times where I really leveled up? Then I'm like really genuinely grateful. Like, I'm so glad I went through that. I can pinpoint exactly to those times where I was like, fuck, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I, I could just call out sick. I could just come up with all the excuses, but I'm like, wow. nope, that's just my mind going crazy. Just go do the fucking thing. Mm -hmm. And then you do it and then you level up. And now looking back at it, I'm like, that was essential. Like there's no other way I could be here. And there's no other way that we can actually create the world to be best for all without it just like leveling up and expanding, level up and expand, right? Yeah, it's like, I experienced that as well, not only with supporting him with office recruiting, like at one point I was doing all the phone interviews and I was doing some of the initial like presentations and whatnot. And when it was like some like, 30 years of experience sales guy who's going to come on with like all of his little sales vocabulary and his like macho man I know what I'm doing you'd be lucky to have me and I'm over here an experienced sales woman who's very young hopping on a call with this person or in person presenting this to him there was a lot going on in there a lot of like self-judgments and projections and limitations and doubting myself that I had to walk through and now on top of that I do this recruiting for leads on Bumble and on Bumble you have every person of every walk of life you know I have no idea what I'm stepping into when I get on the call but every time I, I match with someone on Bumble I first message is like hey let's hop on a call just like being straightforward so I don't have to do the bullshit like you know in between talk and chat I'm like, just like, I don't care how you are. Like, let's hop on a call. <laughs> and so I schedule calls with these people. And and you're talking about Bumble business, right? Like, yes. Like, okay. <laughs> just to clarify. This episode this brought to you by Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just to be clear, Bumble has like different categories. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they're like dating. Best friend and business. They have dating, yes. Stuff. But I'm, I'm not using business. that portion. I have my date here. It's just <laughs> the, the business portion of it. And um, that that pushes me as well. Cause sometimes I hop on a call with people who are doing very well for themselves. They've got everything, they've got their ducks in a row and they don't want to hear anything from me. They just, they just, they just want me to be a part of their little system they've created. Hold on though. Y'all have listened to that audio from Bernard. It's like God conflict, death and time or something. God words and time. That's epic. And, and he brings up that point. He's like, yeah, it was a good guy. Had a good job, everything. And someone's like, well, what did he miss? It's like, he missed, he missed everything. Like just because you're good and your ducks are in a row in the system does not mean shit. Sure, it means you can you know, have mm -hmm. your, your basic needs met, but that doesn't guarantee anything. Like you're just as evil as everything else and you are equally responsible for sorting the shit out. There's a cool point that Jess had said about how when she's matching with these people, it's like, they're not interested in what she has to say. They just want to sell her on their system, bring her into their system, right? And I was looking at this point for myself of how uh, sometimes, you know, you, you want to ask how somebody else is doing or, or something like that. You want to like just do the formalities and all that shit. But the reality is like, that's just kind of, if you have a purpose, and you're not congruent. And, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it's like um, the reason why you want to go through all those formalities, but then it's like with the purpose of I'm going to get them on the phone and I'm going to show them this thing or whatever, whatever it is, right? It's like, are you being, hmm. the, the way that I experienced that was like feeling like I was being disingenuous, mm. right? Mm -hmm. and the part that I was disingenuous was the part of like I actually don't care <laughs> about all that other doing. stuff yeah <laughs> right but also um to me this is this is cool because I just had a chat with my mom the other day and she was telling me about how she had met with this person and this person uh told her something that uh was basically that, that, that she was lying to her best friend. Mm. And my mom just 
blurted out to this person, oh, so you're just telling me you're not an authentic person. You're not true to yourself, right? And she told me that person felt very uncomfortable and said, you're making me feel uncomfortable like this, right? And my mom was like, I'm not making you feel anything. That's <laughs> you. you just told me that, right? But she's asking me, how would I approach that in a, in a better context? <laughs> And what I saw within it was like, dude, that's awesome that you're able to say that, right? But what I found was really awesome about it was because my mom was telling me the starting point that she had was letting that person know so that they're aware of it because they're obviously deluding themselves. They're obviously lying to themselves, but also from her perspective, why would she want to be friends with that person if they're just telling her they lie to their best friend? Well, we just met. What are you going to do with me? You know? And so she's like, that's not acceptable. I wouldn't want to keep that person around. So I was okay with just like, just telling her straight up. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. But uh, she was asking me, well, how would I approach that to actually help her? Because she just kind of reacted to it. Mm. And what I suggested was keep that same attitude of that's unacceptable, right? But use that to persuade her towards what is best, what is acceptable, because we have tools of, hey, check out this information. If it makes you so uncomfortable that you have to lie to your best friend, and then when somebody calls you out on it, just shows you what you're doing, like you feel terrible, well, then there are things that you're holding onto within yourself that's making you act in ways that you're not even comfortable with. Wouldn't you want to be congruent with that, right? But for the most part, what would most people do is they would say, oh, that's, that's so bad. That's too bad, you know? Uh, uh, well, I wish you the best. I hope you can get over that, right? Isn't that so fucked though? You said you'd wish them like, oh, I wish you the best. But like, that's that's disingenuous, right? That's it. Exactly. Exactly. And it's going along with the system. And, and the point that I really wanted to make with this was the system itself is disingenuous to life. Mm. Right. And everyone else is aligned with that system. And so even if you are doing well, you've got all your ducks in a row and all that stuff, right? You're just in line with the system. You're still being disingenuous to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the real what i'm eating no it's like you just, you just come back and you're like no i come in hot right? real the real he comes problem, in like the, the wizard the, world, the wizard that the he real is words ready to conjure up some spells. i'm the real speaker here let me speak <laughs> no it, it's just such a great point and i just want to like what i focus on is like the vocabulary is like what what do people what are people thinking when they hear these words right Mm. and how can how does it come up in their lives because we're talking about specific instances in our lives because mm. there's such fucking visceral points <laughs> of where we perceive inequality inequality is when you think somebody's better than you mm. that so going back to that line of of points okay it always comes back right so you go from evil to anger all the way down to inequality and it always comes from a lack of education. You have not yet understood what is valuable. You haven't understood what's actually valuable in this world. This is why when Cameron talks about change versus when the average person talks about change, it's two totally fucking different things. Oh my God, I've really changed. My bank account went from 15K to 30K. That's like double change. <laughs> it's like Cameron was bringing up this point. He's like, yeah, but did you change why you're making money, what you're going to spend it on, who it's for? Like, did you actually change anything for real? It's a much more fundamental point, right? When we don't understand what to value, what's our default? What's being given to us by the system, mm -hmm. right? Like what? Yeah. What are some examples? Hey, hang on. Cause, cause it just is more clear to me now why somebody who says I'm going to make a bunch of money, then help people. 
part of the reason why they, they don't do that, there's, there's a lot of layers to it, but part of the reason why they don't do that is because when they get up to that point where they're making more money, what Cam was saying earlier about how now you're faced with, ah, oh, but what if it doesn't work out? I've got the accounts, I, I, got, I have more responsibilities. So I have to save more money in order to, to make sure that those things are handled. You just don't understand. You know, it's like, it's never ever gonna get to the point where you're able to do something because you don't have that starting point within yourself to begin with. And, right? and Katie talks about that in, in the audio right before he goes to jail. Right. Everybody thinks they're gonna go down the dark side and then jump to the light side. <laughs> I'm just going to go down the dark side, get everything I want, and then jump to the dark side. Right. And it's so funny, at that point in the audio, it's like, that's what everybody's thinking. They're like, wait, wait, dark side is where you get all the things you want, and light side is like where you like be okay with what you have, but you know, do what makes sense. Um, so then we're like, wait, can we still have the things that we want? It's like, he just told you that's fucking evil. <laughs> but the point is we can't process that. Right. And for anybody who's heard that, I know you guys know this, but I asked a question. I was there at that recording. Yeah. Right. So for anybody who um, has that audio that you're referring to, it's that and he calls it the quote level seven audio. People call it that. Um, it's not actually official level seven audio for Jen, but it was recorded in 2013, right before KT left to go back to Chicago to go to prison. Right. And uh, but I asked a question on there. So I'm not going to say what question it is anybody listening. Now you yeah. Have you have to go find it. You have to go back to the audio and find him. But you, once you hear it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that, that's KT basically says that's next level shit. And we right. <laughs> He was kind of like, well, okay, yeah, let's focus on kind of yeah. the, the immediate stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I want to I want to add some real quick because you made this really cool point about the inequality, right? And I was looking at that because you said you're making this point about what you value, right? And the point about inequality being when you think something's better than you. Okay, what's the one point where everybody thinks something's better than them? money or god well specifically god i was thinking god yeah money too but but specifically it's that it's like the final thing that they use as the final excuse why because you can see money but you can't see god yeah. it's so <laughs> easy to be like well but i mean you can't prove he's not there oh you got me all right okay <laughs> but, but my point is you can always say like god god he's got to take care of that so in other words you're saying there's something better than me god can do it right but here's also where the inequality is and what's fascinating. This, I mean, it, I realized this from what you were saying. What is it that God values? Slaves, worship. Well, no, I don't mean in the real sense, but I mean, ultimately, what oh. we're expecting God to value. Hmm. Well, you'd expect God to value like fairness and Giving. equality. And, yeah. yeah. He values people choosing to follow him because he gave them the, the choice. Are doing what's best, you would assume. Wouldn't you expect that he values all life equally? Mm, yeah, because he created it. He would value all life equally. He sees all life as his children, yeah? Even the fallen ones. Like, we all know these things, right? Mm -hmm. He still loves Satan. You know? He doesn't hate him. He loves him. He forgives him. But Satan chooses to right over, right? Okay, but what I'm saying is we would expect that God values all life equally. So by placing God above you and better than you, that creates that inequality within yourself. You are creating that inequality within yourself that you will never value all life equally. Hmm. You can, and I'm not trying to do like a word game or a logical trick. I'm saying that's why you believe in God because you don't want to value all life equally. You want someone else to do it. You want someone else to figure it out for everybody else. And I just want to take care of myself and have what I want. And God, you love me and give me what I want. And my family and the people I de deem are worthy. But it's not my responsibility to have someone over here. But then don't say you ha everyone has to just accept God. Spells. <laughs> right? Because when people say like, well, the world would be better if everyone just accepted God. What I'm saying accepting God actually means is not being is, is, is removing the inequality between you and God, being yeah. equal to God, yeah. being equal in that you value what God values. And Absolutely. then you take responsibility for what you can physically as a human being on this earth to the greatest extent you possibly can. Yeah, but why okay. wouldn't you do that? Exactly. See, all of the people that say believing is enough and that's it. That's all you have to do. You just have to believe. Well, guess what? You are not 
utilizing what you have been given if that's what you believe you're just limiting yourself completely to say that I don't need to do anything in this existence except believe I don't need to create anything I don't need to solve anything I don't need to live out and love thy neighbor you know as long as I believe no matter what I sin as long as I ask for forgiveness it'll be okay so I literally don't have to do anything I don't have to do anything I don't have to, that's it and that is so fucked because if you actually look at how much we can actually do as human beings and collectively, if we can come together on a specific point, like end game, just like we've, we've accepted this system. We can accept something new if we can come to that conclusion that that's necessary and we're willing to do that. And that will drastically change everything. So why wouldn't we want to take into consideration all life? It's like, you're if you're created in his image and that's what everyone else is and all things that exist are then it's like the sit how can you not understand that it's equal to you and how can you not want to use all your power to to to, to support that like yeah. and then if you're a christian and you believe the bible is is like everything then what about when jesus talks about you'll do greater than i like this but greater like I had made the path for you and now you will do greater than I. And then you just piss out your life wow. and don't do anything <laughs> like, oh, belief is good enough. The point that, that you make of like, we have to change things, right? Because this isn't working, right? Like we have to change the culture. And that is what we're seeing right now is a huge culture shift, but that is taking place in the, in the mainstream that's taking place off of energy just mm -hmm. based on how people feel it's not based in actually what's best like like is the response of uh someone being hurt is a, as a proper response like if your kid hits you is a proper response to just smack them back or is it to educate them on, Hey, that's not best. And no, I'm not going to smack you back No, And you shouldn't smack anyone either. Right. Like that's what we're, we're, we're seeing as the response of society at the moment of, because I felt oppressed and I'm not saying myself, but like, <laughs> because society members felt oppressed, then they feel like others should go and feel oppressed as well. They should oppress others, right? And if we're not specific in how that culture is directed, then our culture is just going to continue to deteriorate. It's just going to continue to produce what it's already producing right now, which is, I think most people would say, not what they want. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the biggest problem that people are running into it's the, the point of they have low vocabulary solutions yeah. and low vocabulary if i could like what i've seen for myself is my first assumption of how i process all information is i don't have to change right like before right it's like you know what i mean by that rick are you gonna say something yeah, yeah, because like, because along with that, there's also lots of fear, right? Right, and like you have to you have to walk through the fear, even after you understand what's going on, you have to still walk through that fear because it's something that I'll just speak for myself. Like it's something that I know that I've created within myself, mm -hmm. and I know that it's it's not real, but at the same time, it feels real. Mm -hmm. you know? And so it, what Mitch was saying earlier about, okay, well, I've got this fear. Let me, you know, walk through it. And then seeing on the other side, oh, okay. <laughs> that worked. Right. I, I can't tell you how many instances I've had since starting using my techno tutor and uh, doing the DIP process. Is that redundant DIP process? <laughs> it's like, isn't, P yeah. process. Anyway, 
doing the IP. <laughs> DIP. Doing uh, the DIP. I call it the Destiny DIPI process. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all spheres. Yeah. But doing that and then also um, reading the blogs and, and really engaging with that material, the Destiny material. For myself, I've seen uh, a lot of shifts and a lot of changes, but also I had to walk through a lot of fears. And of course, this group, self-perfected, um, you know, supported me tremendously to walk through those fears. And it helped me build that self-trust that Mitch was talking about of being able to see, oh, okay, here's where I'm fearing. And it feels absolutely terrifying, but I can see the point and it's worked for me in the past when I've pushed through it. And now, okay, I've, let me just do it again. Like, even though I, I, I feel this fear as, this, as if it's a new thing, you know, but that, and I think if I didn't have the vocabulary for that, I wouldn't even be able to get to that point to your, to your point. See, that, that's the thing right there. There's a lot of the times where you're like imagining something and it's not real. Right. And Mitchell actually shared this one thing with me. It was, it was a while ago that Gion had shared with you. And you're basically talking about, you know how like we'll project a situation, right? Like we're going into some situation and then we're like, oh no, all these bad things are going to happen and it's going to turn out really poorly. And what Mitchell was talking about, what he was sharing with me, he's like, you can take that, write it out. Forgive yourself for starting with the, the loser assumption and now write out the memory or sorry, the projection as what you want it to be. That requires education. That requires the education of, okay, Melat, she was sharing with me how some people they know, there's like this guy who's like venerated in specific parts of the black community. And he's like super fucking racist to white people. Extremely racist. Like he's like, he has like a fan page or something like that. And he's saying, if I see any white people in there, like I'll kick them out. Like I would like get the fuck out of here. Like it's like really bad, right? And she like, no, like some of the people that she knows are part of that group. Because they think that when she's like, I've literally never felt oppressed. She's like, I know. Then whenever I've been oppressed, it was literally my mind convincing me that I was oppressed and oppressing me. How the fuck is anybody supposed to know that? Like, okay, here's the difference right we have a feeling we say oh that's just a feeling okay now the average person they feel a feeling it's like oh because i have the feeling right like it, the, it, the feeling is me right exactly it's like god speaking to them if they're religious something's telling them even if they're what? not religious, even if they're not religious. Exactly. So this is the big point because I know that we talk a lot about like Christians sometimes, or like we talk about how people are. Christian. There's a lot of people who say they don't believe in God, but they act like what, when we talk about God, if you go back and listen to these podcasts, we're talking about, you're saying something else is going to take responsibility for it. Right. Regardless of whatever religion or or no religion, even. Exactly. Science is going to take responsibility. <laughs> exactly. The government, the anything. Yeah. And then those people will continue to complain about how God or really they, they, they just change the word. They just call it the system. It's fucking up. So it's like all the information that we hear when you're listening to those podcasts and all that stuff, we're really pushing the point of it, it has to be you. There is so much, because Drake was talking about how so, how much self perfected has supported him to change. Uh, I what I know is between the, all of us, being in the dis distributor group, where we've all reflected our um, focus of really giving the tools of education to change the fundamental point in our actions. Like we're united in a common purpose. The support that we get from that group is any other support 
totally pales in comparison. Mm-hmm. Right. And the point of that is to say, dude, you if you're not, if you're not being, um, the, the biggest reason that we'll hear why people are not willing to speak up and speak out is because they're going to lose their job. But do you, do you want to know why the support is different there? Why? Think about this. What do I support? Life. Well, yeah, but I mean, changing the system, educating people, etc. So if you're, if that's not your purpose, why would I support it? Right. So if someone's coming to me and they're just like, I just want to build my e-commerce business and that's it. And that's like all I want to do. And I don't care about anything else. Okay. You don't get my support. Hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. And so, but if the person says, I want to actually make a difference in this world, I want to stand up. And part of that is I have e-commerce and I have this and that. And I'm also in, and I'm not letting that interfere with standing up. Cool. I mean, I'm not going to teach you how to do e-commerce. I don't know if I could think about it, but whatever points you're walking through that would support you to stabilize yourself, that might help you in that area as well. Meaning I'm going to support you as a human being as best I can as another human being from what I know and push back and be a point of like pushing back on you and questioning and things like that, if that's what you want. But because I support the fact of what you're doing with your life. Do you see what I mean? Mm. That's my choice. Somebody can say like, well, what right do you have to demand that everybody else does what you do? I, I don't demand that. That's just what I support. That's my choice. What I do with my life, what I support. Do you see that? What right do you have to tell me what I have to do with my life? Me personally. Do you see what I mean? So, I mean, it's kind of like, you can't tell other people what to do with their life. You can't do that. It's like, well, you're doing it right now to me. But do you see what I mean? Meaning I support people who have the same mission as me. So it's like, oh, well, that, that seems blah, blah, blah. It's like, do what you want with yours then. Do what you want with your life. Yeah, you're, you're one of those people that I'm not going to support. <laughs> right. But the way I'm going to support you is by, I am still going to support you. You said, I'm not you, choosing favorites. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just the support's going to be different. So, mm-hmm. And support isn't mean I'm superior. I'm not pretending like I'm superior. So I'm supporting you. That's why I say, I don't use the word help, do I? Mm. I'm not saying I'm going to help you. I'm saying I'm going to support you. Like I support my children. I support my wife. I support my friends. I support, et cetera. That doesn't mean I'm, I believe or I am superior. It means within who I am and what I'm capable of, I'm going to give of myself to explain something, ask a question, do whatever it is to support what you're doing within the purpose of doing what's best for everybody. And if part of that is you're refusing to consider what's best, which doesn't mean I'm basing that on what you're necessarily doing. It's just a matter of whether you're saying something to me that is defending the system as it is and not changing it. If you're saying that, that's, that's, that's not doing what's best. If you want to go do some particular thing in the world, but you, but it's, but you're also supportive of what's best for all, then I support you. Do you see the difference? It's not like I have to control you in terms of what you specifically are going to do. But if I can't see that it's best and I ask you, well, how is what you're doing best for all? And then you say, how dare you? How dare you ask me that? Like, if you ask me that question, I'll just tell you exactly why what I'm doing is from what I can see is best. I have no, I love it when somebody asks me that. You see what I'm saying? Like, well, how is TechnoTutor best for all? Oh, I'll just explain to you. Let's start with the beginning. What's the problem? You know, you start, you explain it. That's, that's selling. It's communication. It's the ability to communicate. And then if somebody says, well, I don't have to justify myself to you. Um, I do feel like I need to justify myself to you because if I don't, then why would you listen to me? Right. Like, why would any, why would you ever listen to anyone that's not justifying why they're doing what they're doing? Mm -hmm. But that's transcending justification to say like, well, you should never justify anything. What? No, you should justify everything, but don't justify things that are not best. Do you see the difference? Right. Exactly. 
So it's like, oh, well, that's just a justification. Well, okay. I'm going to um, drink water today because it's best for my body. Oh, you're just justifying drinking water. It's like, yes, I am. What's wrong with justifying? It's when you justify something despite the fact that it's not best. Where the, where the only solution is to look at what is the outcome? What is the outcome of what you see? What I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and you should work it out. And sometimes in justifying it, you're able to see why it's not best. Yeah. And so in the activity of trying to justify it, you realize why it's not. So there's, I don't see any problem if some, some justifying something, everything should be justified. Mm -hmm. That's how we would live in a just world. If every law was justified in reality, like why is that law exactly like that? And why, if it produces these consequences, are we still accepting it? Justify that. But what justifying turns into is convincing someone to continue accepting it, even though it's not best. That's, and that's what we mean by don't, you shouldn't just, just you shouldn't justify things. You see the difference, right? There's nothing wrong with, the same thing with judgment. There's nothing wrong with judging something if it's not best. It's when you are stuck within judgment and then going into the blame and all that other stuff, just because you're not going to stand up and take responsibility or whatever the case is, that's when judgment becomes self-limiting mm -hmm. whenever you look at a person and you judge them for what they're doing but you're not willing to do anything to support that person or change the system or anything to prevent that scenario from occurring where the 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 biggest thing that we see which i think is so funny is thinking that just because we change the name of it means it's something different so like with god for example right it's like you change it to the universe and all of a sudden you're more superior to all the religious people, right? Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not Christian anymore because uh, I don't believe in the resurrection and the second coming. I believe in ascension <laughs> and, and we're all reunited with energy, not God in heaven, but in the fifth dimension. I'm so like, beyond. So you're it. literally the exact same fucking thing. You just changed all the vocabulary. Okay. okay. So then it's like, you just changed the word Jew <laughs> yeah. to Trump supporters. Yes. Let's get all the Trump supporters and all of a yeah. sudden you're not a Nazi. It's like, <laughs> I'm an anti-fascist. It's in the word. It, how can <laughs> I be fascist? Yeah. I am an anti-fascist. How can it be fascism? It's in the word. But I want to implement uh, a president who dictates to us everything we must do. <laughs> but I think we should do all these terrible things to people and we should merge cooperation between corporate and labor and we should then control <laughs> society and, and monitor speech and everything but it's anti-fascism <laughs> it's like so this is intellectual <laughs> right exactly you, you, <laughs> you see that little point so <laughs> anti-intellectual that's good um you, you'll see that point so subtly right it's like people will say oh but but i am blank and then they're, they're going to describe or try to justify what they're doing. And it just has nothing to do with that. So coming right back to the start about how the blame and the frustration and the anger and all that stuff comes really back to inequality or sorry, well, lack of education. So inequality and lack of education. The very beginning point that we opened with was why you'll want to share something with somebody and then they'll like react or something like that. And then you'll feel bad. You'll be like, this person's just stupid. They don't get it. You're not taking responsibility. This is your next level of responsibility is for you to actually offer them a solution to fixing their stupidity if they're actually being stupid. But take the starting point of it was my fault. This is something that I've done for a long time. I'm sure you guys have done it. It's like, where did I fuck up? Where did I like not explain it as best I could? And if you start there, then you're going to, you're actually going to be able to differentiate what you can control and not can control in your life. If you're honest about it. Now, the number one problem that you're always going to run into is if you don't believe you can change, if you don't believe you can learn, you're always going to fuck that up. You're never going to take responsibility. So if I ask Drake and Mitchell this question, I already know what the response is going to be, but I'll ask them anyways. Um, what if you guys want to learn something new? What do you guys do? You use techno tutor. Yeah. <laughs> like, right now, yeah. before you had techno tutor, when you're ready to take on like the next fucking level of like whatever, what would you do? Jesus, I would grab my notebook. I would, uh, fucking sucked. 
I, I wouldn't First, even I would meditate for three hours. Yeah, I would. Right, and it was the right timing. I know yeah. you're joking, but no, that's that's what I would do. And like, when I the would, energy was right, I would wait for a like, sign. Oh, no, yep. I'd meditate. I'd wait for the perfect time. I'd be like imagining it in my head all this time. I'd yeah, you like, definitely got to visualize it before you start. Right, right. <laughs> Imagine you go down. on Shark Tank, right? And they're like, all right, here's the offers. What do you choose? And you're like, give me three hours, guys. I'll be back. I need to go meditate. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> right, right. No, but like I, I, like I had to imagine the feeling and, and get the feeling. And like I had to pretend I was in that feeling for the whole day, if I could. 68 seconds, 68,000 seconds. And then I'd be like, 68,000. Then I'd be like, oh man, okay. Well, I, I did all that. Now I just wait. Now I wait for, for that thing to come to me. Like that new thing that I was supposedly supposed to learn or whatever. And I've, I've said this before, but I would open books. I'd start reading them and I'd like get halfway through the book and i'd be like i don't get it like <laughs> like I'm, I'm reading the book i think like and, and and i remember thinking like i'm supposed to think about what i read so i'd be like hmm <laughs> i'd close the book and i'd go hmm no i i i know what i read so Okay, that was that was not really helpful. Like, how how am I gonna use any of this? And that's, that's like, so funny, Drake. Drake, my my rendition of it was I would read it once and underline it, but I would know I'd like I definitely have to read it at least once more before I'm really gonna get it. So like, I'm just gonna read it, and like at some point I'll read it again, and like then it'll click. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. It, it's it's funny. It's that same point that Cam was talking about last week about like when you're tutoring a student and they're like, they're reading through and they're like, okay, so what did it say? Hang on, let me go read it again, right? It's, it's the same thing that I was doing, but I wasn't aware of it then. Mm -hmm. Like I, I wasn't understanding as I was reading. See, I know this is probably obvious to you guys now, but obviously we're talking to other people too. So it's probably not obvious to them, but it's like, for me, if I'm reading something and I don't understand it, my immediate first point is there's something else I don't understand. You know what I mean? Like if I got a book on differential geometry or something and I started reading it and I'm like, I don't know what the, f I don't understand. I'd be like, all right, what, what do I need to understand before I understand this? Like, so I need to go back all the way to regular geometry or whatever it is, you know, right. You go figure out something and learn something else first. So to me, it was not a mystery if I didn't understand something. It was, uh, oh, okay. I, now, it wasn't always like that. I would say probably in high school, college, for me, there would be stuff where I would read and it just like, it's just like you're explaining, like, like it, it, which wouldn't click. It'd just be like, okay, I, I don't know. I don't get it, whatever. But es especially being involved with techno and everything. And when you understand that it's just vocabulary and it's not necessarily only, oh, I can just go put some words in and learn those words and then suddenly I can read it because you might, it's like, I think Mitch or somebody said, it. it's like, you have to also know what the words mean, right? You have to have the context because if you don't have the context, you can see these words and still not understand how they relate to each other in the context of what they're saying and so forth. But it's like what you were describing about reading a book and then being like, yeah, I don't get it. Isn't that how people experience reading a math book in school? <laughs> Not, not only like, that. If you try to read a book on finance, isn't it just like you were trying to read a book in math? You know, like, why do you expect it's going to be different? You, you can't understand shit you read here, but suddenly you'll be able to read books totally outside of anything you've ever done before. And suddenly you should just be able to understand them. And you didn't build the vocabulary first. H hang on. Cause there, there's a point about me reading those books. I didn't know that I didn't get it. Right. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I thought that it just didn't make sense. Like, not that it didn't so make sense it. to me. It's just like, it's just like the book is like it's lame you know right, yeah. it's the book's, the book's fault, fault. Yeah. right but but, but that's it, the same thing as saying the other person just doesn't get it right yeah it's, it's just how you see it's how you experience it in that context right yeah but i i didn't think i was dumb or anything i didn't think like i didn't it didn't make sense to me it was just like eh, the, the, i don't know why this book was recommended it's not really that good you know and yeah that's like when people listen to our videos I was going to say, I was going to say a couple of points on that. 
I know people are gonna think that sounds arrogant, but no, that's no, no, the no. reality of it. It's, it's, it's a great point because I used to listen to Cameron's videos and I'd be like, I can't follow this fucking guy's logic. Like this guy's jumping from left to right. Now when I listen to it, I'm like, oh my God, he pieced that together so fucking perfectly. Yeah, and, and it's not some kind of, I'm so above. I don't believe that. I don't think that. If someone else thinks that, they're retarded. <laughs> it's just a simple matter of you don't have that vocabulary. So now that you've developed, you're like, dude, what you're saying is obvious. Like there's something right. special about what you're saying. It makes perfect sense. If someone else isn't getting it, it's because they don't have that vocabulary. They've been pre-programmed to just be limited within this certain context. It, it's like, it's so real and so tangible, especially when you share this with other people, because you'll find them, they'll go to read like, they'll go to listen or read something from Bernard, right? What are some, some things that you hear? Some reactions? I can't understand that guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or Why does he talk like that? Yeah. He right. sounds evil, whatever. Yeah. His, he, his, his accents are so thick. Um, somebody says oh he just cusses too much i, I just can't listen to somebody if they cuss like that right 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 right, right. <laughs> oh my god damn yeah, like you don't even like george carlin like what <laughs> like, there's uh the 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 journey to life blogs like the sentences are so long like oh my god the grammar in this the run-on sentences in this you can make any every fucking excuse in the book but if you don't understand that stuff you're fucked. If you can't adapt your listening skills to a new form of talking or text, you're fucked. Because all you're telling whoever else you're complaining to is that, um, so my whole life I've been spoken to like this and uh, that's how I like it. And that's something, how entitled do you have to be to go back and read the Bible or whatever that you, that somebody has shared is like, this will fucking answer your problems. For example. Okay. For example, then you're like, mm, I don't like this, the writing style. Put that away. It's like, wait, hold on. Hey, hang on. You know, there's like whole communities of people that do that, right? Like they, they've made a whole industry out of rewriting the Bible into styles that people would like to read it in. Right. Have you guys ever gone onto the browser? Like you, there's like, you can go into your browser. I forget how to do it exactly. You can look it up and you can make it translate everything into like pigeon English. <laughs> Have you ever seen this? No, no. It's amazing. Like you get like a BBC article, anything. And it'll be like, you'll, it'll translate everything. And it'll be like, we see them boy running man, you know, like that'll be like how it's written. And it's like translates it into, cause that's like an actual language, right? No way. That's awesome. <laughs> it's like, if, imagine showing up to your first day of like computer programming, like you're doing JavaScript and you're like, um, could somebody put this in English, please? <laughs> and you're like, uh, if you could, we would have, <laughs> it was awesome. Well, trust so, me, we didn't just go out of our way to be obscure. <laughs> here's the fun point. Here's the really fucking fun point because I could be talking about you right now and you might not like this, right? or you see who you were before, but you are the same person who is complaining that other people don't understand you. You are the same person who's like, this person just doesn't listen to me. I don't know why. Or you're like, I don't want to talk to that person. I don't want to confront that person on their bullshit, even though I know it's bullshit, even though I know they're wrong, because you're not confident in your ability to just talk. And you know, it's fun. I never even fucking knew that I was afraid of talking to people until I had to talk about something that mattered. Mm. Because you only ever talk about shit that everybody agrees with. Yeah. You never actually have to challenge yourself until you're standing up for something real. So this is why it's going to be very, very difficult for you unless, like, for example, imagine getting paid to live by principle how much would that accelerate your process this is why drake mitchell this is why we always change the most after we become distributors because it's like no more fucking around you really have to face you realize how much of a piece of shit you are basically yeah you're like fuck dude i thought i was better than this <laughs> Yeah, like in my mind, I'm like so good at talking to people. And then I'm like in my first interview, like, um, uh. <laughs> right, right, right. And that's after like being in the, you, you interview your first person, you're like, so 
<laughs> you're like, damn. It's like, so the, the, the point is really bringing it back to what does it mean in every context to take responsibility for it? The fucking answer is that you have to change. How many times have we all heard that, right? What does that look like in application? It's when there's something that you don't like the outcome of, i.e. you talk to somebody and it didn't go the way you wanted it to go. Assume that you're the problem because you probably are. Because you're probably accepting something that uh, in, in other areas of your life, whatever, that, whatever you're angry at that person for, you're doing that somewhere else. And you don't give a fuck, just like that person. So the problem you'll run into is, for example, going back to the point that Drake was making about low vocabulary, right? Like, what the fuck does that mean, right? It's because there's a level of education that you're missing. Education being every single word that you know can process and comprehend. So if you only understand the word uh, relationship as a romantic relationship, and I'm like, dude, we really have a great relationship. You'll be like, oh, no homo. Or whoa, like, I, I mean, you know, don't you have a girlfriend? It's like, I'm just saying like, a, there's, there's another definition of relationships that have more to that, right? So the, the real foundational aspect of that, what is a relationship really? It's the line that connects two points. If me and Drake are in a room together and there's his phone and there's my phone, Drake can pick up his phone and leave. No problem. Drake can pick up my phone and leave. Problem. You have a relationship with your bed. You have a relationship with eating. You have a relationship with fucking everything. Boom. If you integrate that vocab, you might have a, a little cognition right now. If you actually apply that, you'll be able to take apart so much more. Like right now, what's your, what's your relationship with money? <gasps> like if money was a person, would you say that's an abusive relationship or, or what? <laughs> now, the problem is you just thought about something. You just had a cognition. The truth is you're not going to do anything about it because you just memorized something. You made one little new connection versus if you can take a point, right? We talked about connecting the dots, right? If you have like, in a neural network, it's not linearly connected. It's not one is connected to two, two is connected to three, three is connected to four, and four is connected to one. It's like one is connected to two, three, and four. Two is connected to three and four and one, etc. So they're all connected to each other. So if you have a thousand dots in you and you add one dot to it and you actually connect it to every other dot, you're going to see a lot more. But if you don't have a mechanism or a tool in order to integrate that dot to all the other dots, you're never going to get the education necessary to understand how you actually changing yourself actually changes the world. Because you're not going to understand the practicality of, oh, I just solved the point in myself. And then when I see it in my environment, I don't accept that in somebody else. I don't have to be afraid that that person is going to blah, blah, blah. And I don't have to worry that that person's superior to me because they have their ducks in a line because they have their money in order, whatever the case may be, because that's not actually what's valuable. That's a bunch of bullshit. But Cameron, you were making really good points of the layers of questioning ourselves about how new information will come up to trigger us. So it's like, we'll say something to um, you know, we'll have a conflict with our friend and it's like, okay, well, what's the fear? The fear is, well, I don't want to force them to do anything. Okay. Well, why, why not? What do people normally think of when, when they think of like forcing somebody to do things or why do people not want to force people to do things? Makes them uncomfortable. Yeah. They don't like being forced to do stuff. Didn't we all get forced to do stuff as kids? Yeah. yeah. Now, what was the mechanism that, like, how were we being forced to do stuff? Punishment. 
Yeah, either physically or yeah, reward and punishment. Usually some kind of threat or physical. Yeah, yeah like they're going to take something away from us. <laughs> How often does that actually come up in your environment where you're threatening somebody? Like you're forcefully, de- you know what I mean? Like you're just speaking to somebody and they're getting emo. I had this one like recently and the person realized afterwards, like, yeah, I feel like I'm being forced to make this change in my life. Uh, and they're talking to somebody else about a conversation we had. And it was in all in like, like in good humor, right? But then they realized it was like, just because I didn't force them to do anything. I just told my story and they, they, they understood what they needed to do. Cause they were like, holy shit. Like, oh fuck. I know I'm fucking lying to myself and all this stuff that they felt like I forced them to do it, but it was just their emotion. Right? Can I share something real quick about that? Yeah. yeah. I was listening to Tim Poole the other day and they were talking about, I don't know if y'all, you might, you might've seen this one, Drake, where they were talking about the drone that him and his friends created like a long time ago. And they were talking about Neuralink and all this stuff. And they were saying how, uh, you know, they had hooked up, apparently with Neuralink, they've hooked up a monkey to a video game now. I don't know if you guys heard about this. And the monkey can play like, I think it's like Pong or something with his mind. Oh shit. (laughs) And so this, they got onto this conversation about how um, uh, they, Tim and his friends had made, had taken some drone they, they had bought an EEG, an electroencephalograph, right? Which you can use to like measure your brain waves. And they had, their friend had shown them how they can put, hook that onto them like a helmet. And then it can make like a graph go up and down and they can make it go up and down back and forth with their, just by thinking, cause it was measuring the brain activity and you could kind of figure out how to make it do it, right? And it's like a learning curve to it and so forth. But they had this idea, you could hook that up to a drone where the output signal is connected to like the, you know, the motor of the drone somehow and so forth. And in theory, it would work, right? So they were just talking about this. And then they brought up this other point about how they, I don't remember the details of it, but they have been able to, because they were talking about if someone hacked into your Neuralink or something and they could control you or whatever. Oh, and they said that they've, they've actually been able to control people's physical movements, not necessarily with the Neuralink, but in some other context by... I, I didn't I didn't I didn't catch the part where he said what they physically did like what the device or apparatus was but somehow this device whatever it was was hooked up to a person and what it would do is maybe it's in their ears or something I'm not sure but it would it would interfere with the with the equilibrium you know how like there's like this fluid in your ears that allows you to maintain balance right <laughs> it would it would interfere with that and cause you to feel off balance <laughs> and so in order to correct you would do like that. So in other words, you would feel like you're falling because of the imbalance. You're not actually falling. So to correct, you would move in that direction. Mm. And so it could, by shifting the balance of where it was, you know, throwing you off, it could force you to move in a way. Wow. Even though it's not forcing you, it's like your feet, you know, but the reason I explain all that context is when you're talking about forcing people, and this wasn't really where you're going with it, but it's like, when you're speaking in a way where you're eliciting emotion from people, you're bringing points up, you're highlighting issues, you're explaining to the person why they have this problem and what the solution is. You're not physically forcing them to do it, but they're gonna feel compelled to do it. Right. Because you're using words, you're bringing points up, now they're starting to feel the emotion of the situation that they're faced with, And feeling the desire to have it changed, the pain of it not being changed. And then it's like this feeling of like, I feel like I have to do it. That's what good salespeople do is they make you feel like you're stupid not to do it. Like, in other words, if, if, if I, if you were standing next to a cliff and I started to push you backwards, hypothetically, wouldn't you, would you be stupid not to like, be like, correct yourself? Of course you would. You'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. And so being a good salesperson is not physically forcing someone. It's just speaking in a way where that person feels compelled to do it. And someone can say, oh, well, that sounds very manipulative. But what is verbal communication? What other purpose is there for it? Is there any other purpose? <laughs> like, is it just to be a parrot and repeat a word that you heard? And it's like, Oh, yes. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. You're Thank you for the information. Okay. You know, like, what, what is the purpose of it? Ah, uh, you're manipulating me, dude. <sighs> right? 
Isn't that what we're all constantly doing? Like we're all manip. Now imagine where by accepting, oh, I don't want to manipulate people by accepting that within yourself. Now, the first, the point is to consider what is your starting point within doing it? Okay. If you're a parent, do you have a responsibility to manipulate your children? Yes, you do. Oh, is that a negative thing? If you define the word manipulate as something that leads to a negative outcome for the person, then I can see why you'd have a problem with it. But is that what the word manipulate actually means? Is that the full context of that word? No, it's not. And the problem is if someone says, oh, using words in a persuasive way is manipulative, it is. But then within yourself, you feel like manipulation is bad because that means it's something negative. Then you're going to avoid doing it. Of course, you're only going to avoid in certain contexts, right? You're not going to always avoid it because everything you say is in some way actually trying to manipulate your environment. It's like by picking up your phone and touching it and typing on it and so forth, you're manipulating the phone. That's what the word manipulate means. It's not a negative thing. We can add a negative connotation to it, but it's not actually negative. Even by avoiding those words that you think somebody would perceive as manipulative, you're manipulating that situation so they don't perceive you as manipulative mm-hmm. yeah it's actually a form of self-manipulation to yeah. not say something so you don't feel a certain way you're trying to manipulate yourself to have or not have certain feelings but my point is you have a responsibility if you see someone doing something that is going to hurt them don't you have a responsibility to say something yeah isn't isn't that manipulation aren't you manipulating that person like if they were yeah. about to cut their wrist by accident, wouldn't you be like, hey, put that down? And if they're like, what are you talking about? Why would I do that? And you'd be like, uh, look over here. And you, what, what? And then they don't do it. And then you save their life, right? Right. But you just lied to them, you manipulated them. Yeah. Right, but it's the starting point of what you're doing. You can't avoid, by, by being in this reality, you are by default always manipulating physically. It's just the starting point is what matters. And it's funny why people would get it's funny how people will suddenly, the moment you start talking about sales and manipulation, suddenly they get all moral. Like, oh, you can't do that. Blah, blah. Yeah. But the moment we, but if we talk about, hey, we need to change the system, do what's best for all, make sure children are fed. They're like, oh, what do you think you are trying to do all this stuff? You know, it's like, well, hold on. Are you a moral person or not? I'm getting very confused. You're sending me mixed messages here. <laughs> like, I'm not getting a clear picture here. Are you moral or not? Hmm. But do you see where I'm going with it? So, so that the, the original point you brought up, which was from another call that we had done about what we were talking about, somebody was saying, they're just bringing up a, a fear, a point of like, hey, I, what about the fear of feeling like I'm forcing people to do something if I'm simply just talking to them about something, right? About something but that I stand speaking, for. It's because the, the person listening is making you feel that way. Well, they're, they're not actually making you feel that way. They're trying to get you to feel like that. They're yeah. speaking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah based on what they're saying, you've defined certain things they're saying in a way that brings up certain feelings. And so the ironic thing is as much as they're saying you're forcing them, right? I'll give you an example. Let's say I go to a party and everybody's drinking, right? And I'm like, oh, uh, I'm not going to drink. They're like, hey, have a drink. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I am i don't drink. They're like, what? You don't drink? Come on, man. Get, loosen up. Have some fun. You got to drink. Why not have a drink? And I'm like, no, really, I'm good. I don't, I don't really want to drink. I don't know, man. You're kind of making me feel uncomfortable here. Like you're kind of judging me or something. Like, you know, like have a drink, you know, it's just, it's like, hey, I'm not going to drink. You can drink if you want. I wouldn't because I know what it does, but I'm not going to control you, but I'm definitely not going to drink. I would suggest you don't drink, but it's up to you, right? <laughs> whoa, man. Oh, oh, well, you forced me not to drink. What, what is this? It's like, it's a party pooper, man. Like, come well, on. Why aren't you just doing that to me? Yeah. Right. So now if I go, oh man, now I feel like I was trying to force this guy. I feel really bad. Like I shouldn't have done that. Like I shouldn't have said anything. Maybe I should just take the drink. It's like, you're manipulating yourself. You see that? Because yeah. you don't want to feel something and now you're blaming it on them. And then the way you justify it within yourself is to feel like, oh, well, I was the one trying to force them. Okay. But really you're allowing them to force you. It doesn't make any sense. Now I understand how that feels. I've been there. Like I get it. But when you really start to look at it, it's like, how can anyone force you to do anything in that context? Now, there is physical force. Like you grab someone and you make them do something. I'm not suggesting anyone does that unless the person's physically in danger. Like it's your child running across the street and you're like, hey, what? There's a car coming, right? But, you know, I'm not saying you go around to adults and slap drinks out of their hand. That's not going to do anything. It's not going to change why they want to drink. 
it'd be much better to talk to them and show them why you're not doing it so they can see clearly and they can look at it for themselves. Do you see what I mean? But also you individually talking to that person may not have an effect because there may be other factors that are going on. So you have to just look at the situation, what you're afraid of facing. Because if somebody asked me why I don't drink, I would explain it. You see what I mean? I'm not afraid of them being like, well, I sound like you're just trying to convince me not to. I'm like, don't drink. You shouldn't. Well, uh, it's like, you're uncomfortable. Okay. So you don't want me to talk because you're uncomfortable. But the moment I do something you don't like, you talk to me to get me to stop. And if I said it's making me uncomfortable, then would you stop? And you see how it's like this kind of double standard that people have. So the way to solve the problem is to realize everybody is manipulating everything at all times by default. You can't not do that. So stop trying to stop judging yourself or anybody else for that. Now look at your starting point. But I really like that point of how it's like that equilibrium thing. You can change the equilibrium within somebody simply by bringing up something that's emotional. And that's what people say, like the force is coming in because, because of that, they feel like they have to do it. But all that means is you were actually very effective at persuading them. That's why, that's why the Jedi say, may the force be with you. Exactly. That's actually literally why now, but it makes <laughs> sense, right? Because they're not see, but in that context, like in that movie, it's like, they're literally projecting this physical force or it's like a magnet or something. But in reality, how does it work? You just speak. And then people are drawn towards that or they're repelled depending on how you, how you're speaking. Your spells, dog. So, and that's spells. why, that's why what education is, is every word that you can spell, process and comprehend. Because the, the real point in there is when that person says, Hey, it feels like you're forcing me. When you hear that word, you're like, Oh fuck. Uh, oh, I have a bunch of other content in this word folder that's coming up now and i didn't look at it before this party right so i'm not clear what the word force means but realistically you could just be like am i am i like slapping the drink out of your hand like what do you mean force like well i just feel like you're it's like wow man like you have low self-esteem <laughs> yeah like, it seems like you feel guilty for drinking man you yeah, it sounds like you actually I'm, don't i'm gonna go and enjoy myself at the party, right? <laughs> so th the point being when you're clear about that and this is the thing about the training grounds right that's why you go to the training grounds so that you could prepare yourself for the field but what did we learn in school study for 12 years then pick one little fucking sliver of bullshit that you want to spend your life doing as opposed to Go do stuff, and then your education is figuring out how to do the thing, right? And that's what I see with with the cope the cope household. It's like Max, something comes up in Max's environment or Seneca's environment, and he's like, "What's that?" That's the education. What's that under the hood of the car? You're like, oh well, come, let me show you. Doesn't that just make sense? Like that, it's so funny because. We all got programmed with the point of like the only way to learn is like if you're in some formal course. Right. So then when I first heard like way back in the day that they're not gonna send their kids to school, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, no, they're gonna their kids are gonna be dumb, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like realizing, well, wait, what what no, I'm dumb because of school. Hold on. Before you went to school, you were dumb. That's true. Because school didn't do anything. Exactly. Exactly. That's what people have to realize because you right. made this point about that's their real education, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually education. Mm -hmm. That's the education everyone is receiving is the first seven years of interacting with their environment and their parents. That's your education. That's it. It's not when you go to school. Yeah. You can specialize in a certain field, but only a few people are going to be able to do that. Yeah. So that's not the average person's education is that specific specialty field. It's specifically where you, it's like everything you learned, what your parents said to you and what they did to you when they taught you about Santa Claus, when they taught you, you don't question authority. I'm the authority. That, that's your education. That's why you feel it's hard to stand up and actually become an entrepreneur or whatever it is you're trying to do. Or, or just speak to the person in front of you because yeah. you told yourself that you're never going to become like your parents. So you felt uncomfortable as a kid, but your parents didn't give a fuck. 
So you're like, I'm not going to do that. I want to make sure I take everybody's feelings into, because nobody cared about my feelings. So then you end up doing that to other people where it's like, they feel uncomfortable and you're like, oh crap. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to put them into that situation or whatever the case may be. But, or, or, or maybe you're comfortable with speaking with people, but not about anything real. Right, exactly. You know I mean, like you could be going on and on about football that's what we and all the season and right? this and that. And it's like, but then if you talk about something that actually matters, you 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 like clam up and you like don't want to talk mm-hmm. or something else outside of what you know. And that's going to be a problem because you have to be able to be flexible within what you communicate about. Yeah. It's so funny because... Uh, <laughs> that person who was talking about how they're running into issues with being able to share with their, their friends and things like that. It's like, I remember that person six months ago for an hour straight talking about their motorcycle and their motorcycle course and soccer and things like that. But when it comes to, okay, so wait, why aren't you, why aren't you going to do this? And he's like, like, you know, like, oh, come on, come on, just do it, just do it, right? And then it becomes, well, you know, like, it, you know, this is, uh, this is why, right? Oh, dude, like, dude, you're like, you're kind of killing the vibe, man. Like, it's like that person within themselves is reacting, and if you within yourself are blaming other people in other areas of your life for how you feel then you're going to accept that person blaming you and you're going to be like oh shit i feel bad right so this is why the only answer is are you taking apart each little point inside of you that you're giving away your responsibility for because that is what the that that is what results in blame that's what results in the anger and that's why you'll go do all this stuff and you'll come home and you'll be fucking frustrated you'll be frustrated and be like why didn't that person blank then you got to go vent or some shit. This is the solution. Use the tools, use the process and solve it in yourself. And guess what? And this is one more thing that I, something I realized recently, it's like kind of tracing back where uh, your program may have come from and like what's causing it. It's, it's kind of like satisfying. It's kind of easy. It's like, oh, well, the fear, you know, the blame, it's coming from fear. It's coming from, okay. Oh, I I see it. Oh my gosh, it came from this memory. But the part of the re-education part, the lack of education, you actually have to fucking figure something else out. You actually have to figure out the new level of communication. You actually have to think about, okay, what, like, what do I have, what do I have to do next time? That's what the group is for. Yeah, because you may not know what to do. Exactly. And you might have to look at it. You might have to figure it out. Don't just go, okay, I, I figured it out. It came from my childhood. Cool. A lot of people stop there. And I think that's what you're addressing. It's like, you just exactly. stop there. It's like, okay, but now how do you change, now change it within yourself and actually live differently, hmm. right? That's the key. That's why this process is essential. That's why being a part of the group is essential because you're going to need that feedback from other people. Doesn't mean that you follow anybody or you just do what other people say. It's just that you have that, opportunity to see it from another perspective right okay mm-hmm. let's let's wrap it up at this and mitch i know you're going to give us our little <laughs> our little our spell well, cast yeah that that's what i call self-perfection because it's not just like work on yourself time or like self-improvement like that's all bullshit because it's not actually going through and facing all the fears and going through the scary shit and going and doing it anyway so that's what self-perfection is so if you give a fuck about that or you know other people in your life who would find any sort of benefit from that, share this with them. How else is the word going to get out there? All right. So it's self-perfected.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, like this stuff, comment, share. We're getting some trolls and some haters already. So that's fun. I mean, we've had them for a while, but now they're like a little bit more blatant, like, you know, typing in all caps and shit. That's fun. When <laughs> lady calling us blasphemous. I love that. Uh, so yeah. So, so, um, join join the group and then uh fridays we have the global hangout we'd love to see you on there do the video challenges and get involved because it's it's really next level so 60 people is the average show yeah on, the, on, on, the, on, on a the zoom show. on friday evening that's pretty cool yeah awesome there's like people that's where it's like 3 a.m and shit and like <laughs> i know some people like 
with the eyes closed. <laughs> like taking it all in. Awesome. All right, everyone. Uh, we will see you next week. Bye.